from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Like Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this very soggy Friday where we live in Southern California with wide open telephones where anything goes, anything at all. You can call in and talk about anything your heart desires. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you should think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you need to do is call 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Hey, boy, what a pleasure. <laughs> sure it is. Yeah. I Listen, I was just wanting to kind of see, because I, I, I really respect your opinions about a lot of things, and was wondering if you had any pointers for us or who who you like in the upcoming California primaries. Keep in mind, I'm not registered as a Republican or a Democrat. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, depending on what state people are in, uh, if you're not registered as a Republican or a Democrat, you can't vote in the primary, at least not for the presidential candidates. Mm-hmm. Uh, having said that... Um, you know, I would not, after what's gone on the last eight years, I would not vote for a Republican this time, which is not to say I never would, mm-hmm. but I I do believe it's time to change dramatically what's going on there. I see. And, right. and I do believe that um, the people who are most likely to make changes are the least likely to win. Uh-huh. So, for example, if I had a choice, I'd vote for John Edwards. Mm-hmm. But John Edwards isn't going to win. So I, I do believe the Democrats come down to whether you want that shrieking, shrill, shrew Hillary Clinton or greener than green Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah. But honestly speaking, after what we've had the last eight years, can Obama be any less experienced than George Bush? George Bush had no national political experience. At least Barack Obama has, you know, a little bit of time as a U.S. senator. Mm-hmm. And uh, as far as Republicans are concerned, um, I think they're all a bunch of lunatics, every one of them. Some more than others would not vote for a Mormon. I don't care what anybody says. I would not vote for a Mormon under any circumstances. If you are a devout Mormon and you really believe you're populating other planets by having a large number of children, uh, to me, religion is a chosen lifestyle, and I think... uh, you are not the kind of person I want to see as president of the United States. That's simple. Uh, Mike Huckabee compared weapons of mass destruction to Easter eggs. Uh, thank you, Mike. Nice knowing you. Right. Okay. And John McCain I have personal experience with. Uh-huh. Um, and I found him to be uh, an absolute bastard and a son of a bitch, in my opinion. And uh, therefore, I wouldn't vote for John McCain in a million, billion years. And my personal experience took place when I was in Arizona as a radio personality, and he was a congressman back then. Mm-hmm. And a, an experience I had with him trying to get me fired at the radio station, which did happen. Oh. I'll never have a good word to say about John McCain. John McCain tried to get me fired for my job. Uh-huh. So anybody who likes the Tom Likas show, I, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, pick somebody else if you're a Republican. Not, <laughs> how, about Ron, how about Ron Paul? I think Ron Paul is a lunatic. Um, every election has to have a crank who has no chance of winning, whether it's Ross Perot or uh, 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 Jesse Jackson or 
uh, <laughs> Ralph Nader uh, or Al Sharpton or whoever. Okay, uh, Ron Paul won't win, can't win. Nobody who's ever been a member of the Libertarian Party can ever win. Mm -hmm. And and the main reason for that is because the Libertarian Party is very much like the members of Mensa. Mm -hmm. uh, they love to have these intellectual uh, conversations about stuff the average American cannot relate to. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and therefore they can't win. I mean, so, uh, to, to run for president, you have to accept the concept the average American is an ill-informed moron who doesn't care about what happens in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. If you accept that, you have a shot at winning. I see. If you treat the American people as, as having a wit of intelligence or imagination, you're dead. Uh, yeah. So I guess we're probably going to get stuck with Hillary, then, you think? Well, if it's Hillary versus John McCain, yeah, you're going to get Hillary. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to think you're probably going to get Hillary, which is amazing because I, because she's a woman and because she's from New York, I really thought she had uh, very little chance of actually winning. Now she hasn't won yet, but if she did, it would be amazing to me. I see. Oh, but okay. uh, you can. I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you have Hillary Clinton versus John McCain, that's going to be mudslinging uh, like you've never seen before. Oh, I bet. That's going to be like pay per view uh, wrestling. So then we're all going to be uh, in the toilet for the next four years. Oh, I don't think we're going to be in the toilet at all. Uh, you're going to pay more taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll attempt to get national health care passed again, which, of course, the average American doesn't want. And the average member of Congress, uh, there won't be a majority to vote for that. No. And the, and the war in Iraq will drag on a lot longer than, she, uh, than you think it will under Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. She has no better idea how to get out of Iraq than anybody else. Yeah. You know, and having lived through the Vietnam War, when, uh, you know, one person after another said they were going to get us out of Vietnam, and it took until 1975 to get us out. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It is the same. Well, I, I got to say, you, you have a lot of insight there. And every, by the way, every Republican candidate says uh, they support the war in Iraq. So if you think the war in Iraq is is making us bankrupt, mm -hmm. uh, you oh, can't you can't yeah. vote for any of the Republican candidates because they have all stepped out and said they support the war. Well, except for Ron Paul. Uh, except for Ron Paul, who people will perceive to be a lunatic. Mm -hmm. And you know that's true. Oh yeah. I that's mean, he's yeah. the Admiral Stockdale of this year's election. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Remember the guy I ran with Ross Perot? Why am I here? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. who he is. But, you know, every election has one of those gadflies, cranks, somebody who will never, ever win. Yeah. And you know well, Ron Paul will never win. You go ahead and vote for him, but he will never win. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, no, 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 you do know. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, don't act like you don't know. If you want to vote for him as a protest, that's fine. Don't tell me, you know, anything can happen. No, it can't. This guy will not win. Mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you, if Al-Qaeda bombed three quarters of the country and, mm -hmm. and, and 100 million people can't make it to the polls on Election Day, Ron Paul won't win. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, he, he's not getting much uh, visibility. It's not that he doesn't get visibility. I know who he is. You know who he is. He's been in a lot of the debates. Yes. It's not yeah. that he doesn't get visibility. Well, I, I happened to watch last night's debate, and, and uh, I read something online that said that uh, out of an hour and a half debate, he got six minutes. But but Ron, but he, but he, he, but he was in the debate. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that if his message got a chance to get out there and more Oh, come on. RonPaul.com. Hey, 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 come on. <laughs> the message well, is out there. Nobody wants to hear it, except for a few uh, dissonance and cranks like you. <laughs> well, I guess so. I, I've, I've actually been a libertarian for the last 20 years or so. Yeah, when was the last time a libertarian won an election? Um, well, not a national election, but there have been a few in uh, Congress. and uh, Yeah, you know, but, local. But, but they also ran as a Republican or something like that, right? Right. And let's not pretend. How many how many people who are libertarians are also Democrats? 
Uh, Very few. None, none that I'm aware of, yeah. Right. So libertarians are just a more extreme version of Republicans. Uh-huh. Right? Yes. Who love to debate what would happen if we got rid of the post office. That's true. Or public schools. Mm -hmm. Or public libraries. Or public transportation. Or any right. number of other things that have been good for our society. Mm -hmm. But I think I think a lot of those issues are probably you know like like flag burning and prayers and school kind of non issues that the real issues that are facing our country right now are you I'll tell you what you step I'll tell you what you you step up to the plate and tell the American people you want to eliminate public schools. Let's see how far you get. Well, public schools is not a federal issue. That's a that's a local issue. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. Abortion is not a national issue either. Mm-hmm. The point is, libertarians tell the truth, Tony. Libertarians believe in eliminating public schools. They believe in eliminating community colleges, state colleges. They believe in eliminating the post office. They believe in eliminating. <laughs> Should I keep going? Well, I understand. I, I, you know, I've, I've heard, I've heard those arguments, you know, many, many times by libertarians. Yes. That is why libertarians will never, ever be running things, because the American people are never, ever going to go along with those concepts, ever. Mm -hmm. They're extremists. <laughs> and you are an extremist, too. Well, I, I, I don't think of myself necessarily as one, but I... Can you I imagine do, I what this country would have been like without public schools? Regardless no. of whatever problems we have in public schools. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the rampant illiteracy that we would have in this country if we did not have public schools? It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah, but many libertarians are in favor of getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. Public well, school I, system. I, Goodbye. Yeah, but I, I think again, those are those are like the the theoretical kind of issues. But that that's are... what libertarians love to talk about, and that's why nobody takes them seriously. Yeah. They, they'll debate how many angels can dance on the head of a pin and who's going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. But I, I'd like to see more serious talk look, looking, you know, talking about uh, getting us out of the war. And, uh, uh, don't watch the Republican around. debate for that. You're not going to see it. You're going to see Ron Paul mm -hmm. uh, playing the part of Admiral Stockdale. Mm -hmm. Because I, think, I, I don't think any of the Republicans or Democrats, um, you know, up, up until Kucinich left uh, yesterday, I guess, uh, are, are going to end the war, and um, certainly they're not going to do Well, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, by the same token, uh, at least the Democrats uh, who have a chance of, of winning the nomination say they're in favor of ending the war. It's all about what kind of quote-unquote timetable they're going to have to end it, which it's just going to drag on for another couple of years. Mm -hmm. But at least they say they will end it. The Republicans will not say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. They're committed. <laughs> All right. Those are your boys. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess, like I said, we're we're going to be in the toilet for the next four years. We've been in the toilet for the last eight. Oh, I know. So I, I agree with you. What there. else is new? Mm -hmm. Hey, Tom. I Might as well have a party, Tony. <laughs> I appreciate your... Come on down. I got chicks. Hey, can you still take people um, Seattle Mariner style? Uh, oh, you mean uh, Kingdom style? Oh, you want Seattle Mariner style? No, no, no. We do have Seattle Mariner style. Yeah. And, of course, the Mariners are still just yeah. as bad, and, and they still <laughs> continue to fold like an accordion. Well, there you go, a legacy. Uh, it's the accordion sound effect, Art. Play the accordion. All right, here, Art's going to play it right now. That's the accordion sound effect. That is the Seattle Mariners folding like an accordion. He hasn't had to play this one because we haven't played it since Brett left. Hi. Right, so that's the accordion, and that's the Seattle Mariners folding like an accordion. Now I'm going to press this button, and a production piece is going to come on that's going to signal the upcoming commercial break. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. <laughs> 
Better to have chicks who live a little bit of distance from you, don't have time to see you. She's got three more years to finish her PhD. So. Then you seem, by the way, you seem so accommodating. Honey, you've got that PhD to study for. You take all the time you need working on that. I understand. And when you get all that free time, you bang on the chicks. That's what you do. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom, that is our telephone number, wide open telephones. This is your chance to talk to me about anything at all. And we only do it on Fridays, so now is the time to start dialing. And uh, we will get you on the air before the end of this hour. And you, you have things to say to me, don't you? Sure you do. It's Melanie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Hi. Hi. Um, I need your advice. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm I'm in high school right now, and I'm gonna get out in June, right? Yeah. And I'm planning on moving out by September, and I want to move out um to Northern California, like in Monterey Bay or Merced. Have you ever been okay. there? Yeah, I've been to San Francisco. And why do you want to go there? Because I just want to get away from here. Why? But, like, wait, I wait, want wait, to wait, go wait. to community college over there. And, wait, like, one, one step at a time. Why? Okay. Why do you need to go all the way there? Because I don't want to go anywhere around here. Why? I just want to see new things. I want to see new things. Have you like seen all of Southern California yet? No, but I feel, I think that, like, San Diego and, like, I think it's expensive and I'm like, and I'm thinking like. And you think Monterey Bay is going to be cheap? No, darling. I got news for you. That's even more expensive than here. It is. Yes, of course. But like I heard that Merced is um not that expensive. Merced. Merced, yeah. Yeah, is there some guy up there you're chasing? Oh, there's obvious. There's some reason you want to go there, and you're not being honest with me. No, uh, like. Because I was trying, because I, I wanted to go to Fitham in San Francisco, but um, I I don't think like like. But then I changed my mind because I think that that I'm, I don't I don't want to be in the fashion industry all my life. I like so that's why I just want to. The fashion industry? You, you never said anything about the fashion industry. This is what you want to study. Oh, because oh, I want to be. I wanted to go to Fitham in San Francisco because there's one in San Francisco. Right, and where are you gonna live there? In an apartment. Yeah, and who's going to pay for that? Oh, because um, well, right now I'm saving up money. So, Darling, like, you're, you're in high school. What do you do for a living? I go to school. How much money do you have? Oh, well, right now, well, I started working. How much do you have? Saved up right now, 300 $300 wouldn't pay for a week of rent in San Francisco or Monterey. So Do you even know how much things cost in those places? I heard they're expensive. How much is expensive? How much do you think the rent might be? Uh, a thousand a month. Are you kidding? That it's more, darling. You're you're in over your head right now. Okay. You need to do more research before you have a harebrained scheme like this. Okay. That means you go to the websites of the local newspapers uh -huh. in the places you might want to live, and you see if they've got online classifieds. And you I went on Craigslist. You went on Craigslist, and what did you find? I found apartments for um, 988 Well, that's the cheapest one I found. <laughs> and, and there's one apartment for $988 a month. Mm -hmm. Do you well, even there's, there's more, but do you even know that's... where it is or how safe it is? No, I just know it's in Monterey Bay. This is an apartment for one person. Yeah, it's a single. 
But, but I'm moving out with my friend. So you're going to have a roommate? Yes. And why does she want to go there? Because she's going with me. She's like following. Well, we're going together. Darling, have you really thought this out? I mean thought it out. Yes, well, I have. All you've got is three. Time. All you've got is three hundred dollars. How much are you no, gonna have? Not, well, tomorrow, well, like I'm looking for another job because right now I have one. Well, darling, that, you're gonna have to also go to school and get passing grades, aren't you? Yeah. All right. So, how much money do you think you can make by next June and save? I don't know. I think. I don't know. Well, my goal is to make like at least a thousand, like me and my friend together. A thousand dollars. Yeah. All right. Let's say you take the thousand dollar a month apartment with your friend. Uh huh. A thousand dollars will get you through two months. Rent. How are you going to pay for electricity? Uh -huh. Well, like, cause um, we, like we want to go over there like before September and like. Forget and that. And get a job, like look for a job over there too. How much money do you think you're going to make? I don't know. A minimum wage? Great. So let's say you make minimum wage. Do you know how much that is? $8. $8 an hour. Uh -huh. Let's say you work 40 hours a week. Uh-huh. That's $320 a week. And you're going to so you're going to do that for how long? The summer? Yeah. All because right. tomorrow, well, like, because uh, the job that I have right now, they pay me $9 an hour. Right. Uh, dear, uh, you're going up there with $1,000. Okay. You have 300 now, and you and you think you'll have $1,000. Yeah. All right. So that means you can pay for the rent for two months without having any groceries, without a telephone, and without being able to turn the lights off. But you think that's funny? I'm financial aid too for for school. At that that only pays for school. We're not even talking about school. We're talking about paying the rent. Let's stick to living expenses. Uh -huh. You won't have enough. So I shouldn't move out. No. To stay here with my parents. Yes. And I know you don't get along with your parents, and that's what this is really all about. I do, I do. Like, I love my parents. Well, then, stay there because with them. I just wanted to, like, get out of this place. Well, I'll tell you what. When you graduate from whatever it is you're studying, uh -huh. uh, and then you have a real career, then you can move out. Okay. My friend's listening to you because she wanted to pr prove me wrong. That I'm going crazy. <laughs> I think you are going crazy. Yes. Why are you in such a rush? You were trying to get laid. What is what is the deal here? No, I'm not in a rush. Like I just wanted to like see new things. Yeah. Well, guess what? You got your whole life to see new things. Okay. You don't, you can't afford to see new things right now. You can't. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes, I I understand. Be realistic. You can't do this. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. So stop making these plans. Start planning on being here in Southern California. Uh-huh. I mean, look, you're studying fashion design. That doesn't take four years, does it? No, it takes two. Sorry. Can you, you can wait another two years, can't you? Yes. And by the way, do you do anything about that business? About fashion design? No, because I'm not really like I'm going to fit on for not really for fashion, but it's for so I could become a director. A director of what? Independent films. You're going where to study that? Fit on. What's that? Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. They have a film course. Yeah. Why wouldn't they you go to one. Why wouldn't you go to a film school like USC? Because I couldn't make it at UCs. Why not? You're not smart enough. I am smart, but I just I just didn't 
show it. So your grades are terrible, and that's because... Well, right now they're good. Like, right now I have good grades. But before in ninth and 10th grade, I, I didn't have good grades. But now I made up everything. So you were partying in ninth and 10th grade. Yeah. Right. Well, perhaps, dear, what you need to be doing is going to a community college for a year or two and then go to USC. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, like, of doing, too. Well, that means you have to stay here for the next four years. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not so bad. People killed to live in Southern California. Are you kidding? I know. Are you, are you, are you trying to escape creditors or something? Why are you so anxious <laughs> to get out of here? Because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be here. I don't. Why not? Wanna, like, because I want to be on my own. I want to see like. You can't. You I, can't afford to be on your own. I know, that's, that's you know why? Because you partied for two years and you have lousy grades and you did it to yourself, dear. Uh -huh. You know how people do things wrong? They have to go to jail. They have to go to prison. They have to. That's you. Okay. <laughs> Had you gotten good grades all the way through, you might have gotten a scholarship. I know. But you didn't, did you? No, I didn't. Now you'll have to pay for it. Yes, I do. So just prepare. You're here for the next four years. And that means community college. And that means with an eye towards transferring your credits to USC or another university that has a film school. Okay. And that means living with your parents. Yes, they're all my parents. That's right. <laughs> Laugh it up. You did this to yourself. I know I did. So now you have to pay the price. Thank you. Your friend is right. I know she is. <laughs> She's laughing. I bet she is. Hang on a second. Uh, Dan, what did you want to say to Melanie here? Well, first of all, I recommend if you're interested in independent films, definitely take a video camera along with you on this little trip because from what we're hearing, this has all the makings of a terrific comedy documentary. <laughs> comedy of errors sort of situation. Yeah. Uh, dear, this is has all the trappings of the single worst decision you could ever make in your in your life. You don't have a job lined up. Monterey and Merced are not exactly the mecca of fashion design and independent film. Research the job market. Research the housing market. Try to move away from Craigslist and mix in a newspaper or even better yet, a, a, an actual website, and you might have a little bit more success in finding out that this is an atrociously bad move for your future. Okay, thank you. That wasn't the answer you wanted, is it, Melanie? Hello? Yes, I'm here. That That's not the answer you wanted, is it? No. I know. But you have to be realistic. Yes. <sighs> Thank you. All right, Hello. Melanie. Can you take me out tribal style? <laughs> yes, I certainly can. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Like this. You say uh, women are just toilets? That does not make any sense. Okay. Human toilet, yes. That is crap. Like, okay, a girl cannot be called a toilet. Appropriate. It's the Tom Like It Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I want 800 800 tom This is Claudia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing okay, Claudia. Um, I called. I have a question. Um, I want to find out what your opinion is on people who do um, illegal drugs or um, drink at work. Do you know any people like that? Um, yeah, that was me. <laughs> oh, that's you? Um, yeah, me. All right, uh, before I can answer your question, I, I have to uh, ask you one more question. What station do you work for? <laughs> <laughs> I work for 
I, I work in a call center, and I hate my job. It's the only way that I can survive. Again, what station do you work for? <laughs> I <don't>, none. <laughs> ah, okay. Funny. Well, <laughs> seriously speaking, um, look, my uh, I, we've all been there. We've all been 24 years old, and we've all had bad jobs that we hate. And uh, by the way, dear, do you actually have a game plan for your life, or is your uh, plan to just stumble around until you meet some guy who'll pay your bills? No, that's not my plan. I do plan on going back to school. I kind of um, partied, doing... partied your way to the call center. No, no. Well, the call centers, you know, without a degree and without going back to school, they pay pretty decent money. Yeah, well, the point is, had you not been partying, you'd have been in school. Yeah, you're right. Although I had to, you know, I don't know, I have millions of excuses, you know. No right. To... Well, on this show, excuses don't wash, okay? You partied your way to the call center. That's why you're working there now. <laughs> you're right. And now you're partying at the call center. And in the parking lot, in the car, everywhere else. Yeah. Right now, darling, um, love you to death. Okay, but uh, let's let's review. <laughs> you don't have a game plan for your life, right? No, I am going to go back to school. When? Um, eventually. No. Then again, it doesn't wash here. You could say that to your mom and your dad. So what, and your what, drug counselor, but you can't say it to me because I know you're full of crap. Well, let me ask you a question. Right now, I just moved back from Colorado living with my mom. She gave me two weeks to move out, and so I had to get a job, which I have right now, and now I have to move out of her house, which she's willing to lend me the money, but I have to repay her, so I have to get a second job. So your mom has finally decided to start cracking down on you. Oh, so she's always been like that. Right, and you decided to ignore her and party. Well, no, she, I mean, she smokes too, but she does it more like socially and just casually to help her with pain and stuff. She doesn't, she doesn't do it like I do. I guess I'm just kind of living in a false reality, but it's fun and it feels, it feels good, but I know it's real stupid. I need to go back to school. But you need to go back to school when the next semester begins. I don't know how I'm going to fit that in my schedule. Though. You're going to have to, you're going to have to fit it in. <clears throat> Probably a good idea. Not probably. Yeah. What do you? So, what do you think about this smoking? Can I still smoke while I go back to school as long as I'm doing the right thing and I'm in the right direction? My opinion, huh. and I've smoked weed. Okay, so understand where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from it as like some kind of prude or some narconon guy or something like that. Okay. My opinion is that until you have a game plan for your life, you got to take a break. That's going to be hard. <laughs> well, then you have a problem. Yeah. Okay, and that means you have to get some help. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. So so that means you have to do it tomorrow or Monday. Yeah. You have to do it. Yeah. Because otherwise, that's exactly what you're doing. You're killing time until you meet some other guy who probably will have the same problem you have. Yeah. And then you'll sit there humping all day and smoking and making $9 an hour. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> and then eventually you'll be 37 years old and you'll be working at the Tom Thumb. What do you think about, um, like, multi-level marketing companies and that sort of thing? That's called That's pyramid sales, dear. And uh, Did you read the article that, Don that uh, Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki put out, though? What do you know about that? I know a lot. I actually no, you don't. Uh, I you don't. Know. You don't have two nickels to rub together. Hmm. Not very much money. But... Forget about that. Well, Concentrate. Have... Forget it. Okay. Go to school. Okay. Stop smoking weed. Get some help. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. I you're, you're in no position to be buying real estate with no money down with Robert Kiyosaki. Oh, no, not buying real estate. Whatever. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Likas. And thank promise you. me you are not going to go to any seminars with Donald Trump or Robert Kiyosaki or anybody who's going to tell you how to get rich quick. Please promise me you're not going to do that. No, I'm already, I already kind of have something that I'm already involved in, so I might as well just. What? 
Get yeah. out of it. Just stop. Stop unfocusing your life. Yeah, I know. Stop. You don't know anything about multi-level marketing or any such thing. I don't care if it's Mary Kay or Avon. I don't care what you're in. Forget it. You are not there. First, you're in drug rehab or drug counseling. Second, you're waiting for the next semester to begin because that's when you're going to begin going back to school. Third, you're going to have a job and you don't get stoned while you're on the job. Okay. Otherwise, darling, uh, <laughs> do you want to see your future? No. I'm gonna, I already know. I've seen I'm it. My tell- dad's dating a chick that pretty much would be me in, you know, 20 years. And it's kind of scary. Here's but- where I want you to go. Here's what I want you to do. You got, mm-hmm. you got some time on a weekday next week? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. You're in West Palm Beach? I want you to take a little road trip. Okay. I want you to find any Indian casino along the Tamiami Trail. All right? You okay. may, you have to look it up on the Internet. Find one of the Indian casinos along there. I want you to go in there about 11 o'clock in the morning, any weekday next week. Okay. Look at the women who are there. <laughs> That's you 20 years from now. Okay. I want you to see what you're going to look like 20 years from now. Okay. That's you. You have to do this. It's life-changing, and you have to do it. Okay. Claudia's calling from West Palm Beach. Can you take me out Kobe style? Do you know where the Tamiami Trail is? Do you know how to find it? Um, yes, I do. So you know there's Indian casinos in that area? Um, that I don't know. I'm not a big gambler. That's, we don't ask you to gamble. I'm asking you to find an Indian casino. It has to be an Indian casino. Well, of course, it's Indian casino. It's Florida. That's all there is is Indian casinos. I, I want you to go along the Tamiami Trail to any Indian casino at 10 a.m. Okay. And look into the faces of the women at the slot machines. Okay. That's you. You're 24 now, so you can get away with this now. But women who were like you when they were 24, they're at the slot machine at any Indian casino on the Tamiami Trail. 10 a.m. They got on the bus with their sister or their best friend, and they're chain smoking, and they're playing the nickel slots. I want you to see it. Because that's going to be you. Okay. Will you do that? Yes, I will. I'm not kidding, Claudia. I will. That means this coming week. Yes. When you see that, maybe you'll have a little more incentive to work a little harder. Because I don't think you can see the future, can you? No, I like to live in the present. We're going to show you the future. Remember, did you ever see uh, Christmas Carol with Ebenezer Scrooge? Um, I vaguely remember that. The ghost of Christmas future takes him to what the future will look like? Oh, yeah, I remember. Right. We're going to take you to Claudia's future. Okay. To an Indian casino on the Tamiami Trail at 10 a.m. Yeah, but every second is another second to turn it around. Nickel slots, dear. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tom. Will you call me back and let me know about your field trip? I will. I won't hold my breath. I will. I will. It just has to be the right time. And don't smoke any weed on the way out there, please. Okay. <laughs> because I want you to see this. Okay. I already told one guy on today's show, I told one guy I want him to go to Ikea tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. to see what it'll look like when his girlfriend wants to move in, what it's going to be like. I'm showing you the future. Okay. I want you to see it. I want you to study it. After you're done looking at the women at the slot machine, I want you to tell me point by when you call me back and say, that's what I want to be in 20 years. I doubt that I would. It's time to look forward, dear. Your mom didn't. But if you have want any chance of getting out of this, you have to do that. Yeah. Okay? 
Good luck. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at LomiUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.